Have you ever wondered why unusually attractive women seem to be a bit overrepresented on the pro tennis tour? Probably not, but the social psychology behind this phenomenon is fascinating and a little bit disturbing. Now, obviously, tennis is a physically demanding sport, so the professional players are in peak physical condition. But tennis is an individual sport in which players tend to specialize early, and developing tennis talent at an early age requires thousands of hours of intentional practice under the watchful eye of an expert coach. And the last two or three generations of tour players have been trained at academies that bring in hundreds of talented young players and send out the very best to the pro tours. But during their time at the academies, the more attractive kids might attract more attention from coaches. One of the reasons why this is the case can be found in a body of research known as the what is beautiful as good studies, which collectively demonstrate that we tend to overestimate the abilities and the potential of more attractive people and tend to underestimate the abilities and potential of less attractive people. And it's not just teachers and coaches that are influenced by these biases. The ways in which peers treat each other are also influenced by perceptions of physical attractiveness. Humans have an innate bias in favor of more physically attractive people. And even though there is no logical basis whatsoever, deep down we tend to assume that good looking people are likely to be good at other things, driving a car, throwing darts, writing poetry, or playing tennis. And when teachers believe a student has greater potential to succeed, or when a coach believes that an athlete is more likely to develop extraordinary talent, they treat them differently. And by providing more attention and holding them to higher standards, the expectations of teachers and coaches influence student and athlete outcomes. This sort of self-fulfilling prophecy is known as the Rosenthal effect. And this may sound pretty creepy, but there is research evidence that PE teachers are more likely to adopt ideas proposed by more attractive kids and pay more attention to more attractive kids during PE classes. And at tennis academies, that additional attention from coaches may be the difference between making it on the tour and taking the much less lucrative and prestigious route of playing college tennis. So this what is beautiful is good way of thinking is our natural human default, our autopilot. But we have the free will to overcome parts of our nature. It's like breathing. We breathe without even thinking about it, but we can control our breathing if we choose to do so. So a teacher or a coach could be mindful of their natural tendency to overestimate the abilities and the potential of more attractive kids and underestimate the abilities and potential of less attractive kids and make a concerted effort to focus on developing the individual talents of every player rather than give disproportional attention to a few. And in recognizing this, coaches can make sure that they are developing a deep bench and make sure that they have their best players on the court at any given time by treating everyone more equally.